warm greeting. Today is Saturday, August 16, 2025. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. At the time of recording this video, it is 12.15 in the afternoon, local time, in the northeast of the Caribbean, where we continue closely monitoring the evolution of the powerful Hurricane Aaron, which already has maximum sustained winds of 160 miles per hour, making it a powerful Category 5 hurricane as it approaches and passes to the northeast of the Caribbean region. During the last 12 hours, Hurricane Aaron has undergone a process of rapid intensification and at a pace rarely reported in the Atlantic. So, without a doubt, this hurricane will go down in the record books as one of the fastest intensifying hurricanes on record. In the infrared satellite image, we can see how impressive the hurricane's structure looks. It also has a very small eye, which has helped it strengthen at such an impressive pace. And some outer bands are bringing heavy downpours and some wind gusts to areas of the northern Lesser Antilles. And if we look at the visible satellite animation, we can see the hurricane's eye, located approximately 180 miles northeast of the Caribbean. We can also see that it has maintained a mostly westward track since early this morning. In the next few minutes, we will talk about how this has changed the forecast and what effects are anticipated in the Northeast Caribbean during this weekend. I wanted to share the following animation where we can see a very typical feature of rapid intensification processes. Here we have Hurricane Aaron generating strong thunderstorms and lightning around the circulation center or the eyewall. This is a phenomenon we see during intensification processes like the one observed this morning, and it gives us a very clear idea of how impressive and powerful this hurricane is. Hurricane Aaron is already setting some records. First, it joins a short list of hurricanes that have reached Category 5 so early in the season. The last one was last year with Hurricane Barrel, which became a Category 5 hurricane in July. Meanwhile, Aaron is the first Category 5 hurricane to form outside of the Caribbean or the Gulf of Mexico this early in the season. In other words, this is an unprecedented event since at least 1851. Definitely a very impressive record, and in addition, it is expected to remain a Category 5 hurricane for a long period of time, and it is possible that this may also set a record, since it is very difficult for Category 5 hurricanes to maintain this intensity for several days. The news of the day is that since early morning hours we have seen the circulation center generally moving quite westward, keeping a track outside the cone of uncertainty of the National Hurricane Center, and this has raised concern among residents of the Lesser Antilles Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. This westward movement has been confirmed by several Hurricane Hunter planes that have been investigating the hurricane. But in the latest passes through the circulation center, we began to see that it is now starting to resume that west-northwestward track. And although that completely westward component we saw during the last 12 hours was not forecasted, notice that the circulation center is already at a fairly high latitude, above latitude 19 degrees north. It is forecasted that it will soon continue on that west-northwestward track. Now, if you live in the Northeast Caribbean, know that there is no threat of a direct impact. In the worst-case scenario, if it keeps moving westward, note that the tropical storm force winds, represented in orange, will remain over Atlantic waters, particularly because the strongest winds are located to the north and northeast of the circulation center. This is the reason why no hurricane or tropical storm watches or warnings have been issued. Let's take a look at the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center. Notice that the projection continues showing a turn toward the west-northwest, passing about 175 miles northeast of Puerto Rico tonight, Saturday, and it should remain a Category 5 hurricane for at least the next 24 hours. Here you can also see the extent of the sustained tropical storm force winds, which would remain over Atlantic waters without affecting the Lesser Antilles Puerto Rico or the Dominican Republic. In the medium and long term, the models remain consistent projecting that it will maintain a track toward the eastern United States and west of Bermuda. So this trajectory is definitely very favorable since it would prevent a direct land impact. On the other hand, as Hurricane Aaron continues moving over the southwestern Atlantic, it is anticipated that the circulation will become increasingly larger. And here we have a projection of how Hurricane Aaron would look early next week as it passes between the United States and Bermuda. The HWRF model shows it having an extremely large eye of over 100 miles in diameter. Now that we know the circulation will pass closer to Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, how does this change the forecast of indirect effects we will feel across the region? The reality is that there are no significant changes. We continue projecting between 2 to 4 inches of rainfall during the next 48 to 72 hours, while the heaviest rain would remain over Atlantic waters. For the Dominican Republic, we continue projecting between 25 to 50 millimeters. Despite this, there is the possibility that some isolated locations between Puerto Rico and the northern Lesser Antilles could accumulate over 5 to 6 inches of rainfall, so it is important to continue monitoring the bulletins from the National Weather Service. Meanwhile, sustained tropical storm force winds should remain north of Puerto Rico. 
although some gusts between 35 to 40 miles per hour may affect the northern Lesser Antilles and Puerto Rico Saturday night and Sunday morning. And remember that marine conditions will be very dangerous along the coasts of the northern Lesser Antilles, Puerto Rico, and eastern and northeastern Dominican Republic, with seas reaching over 12 feet in height, creating very dangerous conditions for swimmers and small boat operators in Atlantic waters. These swells will also be affecting the Turks and Caicos and the Bahamas, so a lot of caution is advised across this area, and in the medium term, it will also affect the entire U.S. East Coast and the island of Bermuda. Well, that's all for this forecast update. Stay tuned to Hurricane Info for forecast updates. So I ask you to give this video a like. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you get notifications when I record new videos. I hope everyone in the Northeast Caribbean has taken the necessary precautions, and please don't go to the beaches during this weekend. Goodbye.